Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 364, Signs and Symptoms of Thyroid Disease. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We've talked about thyroid disease any number of times, and there are other podcasts that we've done that you can go back and they're indexed on our website and find if you have an interest or need to do that. But periodically, it's important to review some of the data about some of these issues that are concerns for large segments of the population. By doing it differently, by doing it at a different time, we find that we reach a different segment of the market. And so we find <laughs> that it has value, and we hope that you can appreciate the discussion. Uh, because it, even if you don't have thyroid disease, the odds are somebody that you love and care about does have or will have thyroid disease. And, and you can have it in one of two directions or domains. You can have hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. The more common one that most people get in in our part of the country is hypothyroidism. And and I want to start the discussion by talking about my wife, whom I I love dearly. Okay. (laughs) And she's my patient. for years had the coldest hands and feet. I mean, she, she would put her hand on me or her foot on me at night when I was asleep, and I would levitate out of bed. It was like a block of ice just coming to me. And she was always cold and always complaining about being cold. And she went regularly to see her gynecologist for feminine checkups and all those things. Mm-hmm. He did blood tests on her. Maybe I don't know how often. I, I shouldn't speculate. But I, I think regularly. Mm-hmm. Never identified that she had a hypothyroid mm-hmm. problem. Uh, she did have, and I don't know if it's for the same thing, uh, like a sugar test. Uh, that's that was different. Okay, that's a whole a different, different thing. thing. But you met her socially, and watching her and talking to her over dinner, like the first or second time that we went out to dinner with you and your husband, you looked at her and said, "Have you had your thyroid checked?" And she, she looked at me like, "What's this all about?" <laughs> yeah, she didn't <laughs> what, know me at all. Got? She did, and you didn't know her, but you saw things. I sadly that just blurted made you that out. Recognize there might be a problem here. Mm-hmm. So then she followed up on that, and sure enough, she had this issue, and she needed to have her thyroid replaced, mm-hmm. and you put her on a medicine. Mm-hmm. And now her hands and feet aren't cold, and I can sleep all night. Isn't that great? <laughs> so all, it's you. all about you. <laughs> well, uh, it is all about me. That's all I can tell you. So, but. I have thyroid disease or thyroid, low thyroid since I was in my 20s, and Brett has it as well. So, I mean, we, we know well, very well. I cold. I had other issues. You had other issues, and yeah. everybody has, a, has different symptoms among a big array of symptoms that thy, thyroid affects everything. Uh-huh. So, there are signs. Like, signs mean something that I can see by I, looking at you. I didn't have heavy menstrual periods either. No, you didn't. That's, <laughs> That's good. That'd be a... Constipation, maybe. <laughs> Brittle nails, definitely. Yeah. Weight gain, yes. Uh, dry skin, y- yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, slow heartbeat, I don't know. Goiter, no. Puffy face and eyes, sometimes. You did have that. Yes. Uh, not the most flattering. You had loss of lateral eyebrows. Definitely. Loss of... And they're you, growing back. Because I'm on medicine. Mm-hmm. My doctor... Yeah. <laughs> Your doctor put you on that. Yeah. And then um, you... I don't know. I didn't feel your hair, but... Coarse dry hair. You talked to me about that. Yeah. So you had that as well, and you were tired all the time. All the time. Of course, and I was working fifteen hours a day, six days a week. But yeah, that that'll do it. But you were ty- more tired than than yeah. even that should should yeah. uh, cause. But you, it also causes low thyroid causes depression. So but, and we don't. I mean, those are another symptom. That's another symptom. I just don't want to mi- miss the no, rest no, of the I, symptoms. Absolutely. Forgetfulness. And swelling all over. You can have yeah. swollen ankles, swollen legs as well as a swollen face and eyes from low thyroid. And the the test that usually goes up as soon as you get low thyroid is your LDL cholesterol. So many people are treated for their LDL cholesterol and they're treated for their depression, but nobody looks at why those two things happened. And so they take two drugs instead of one thyroid. 
Wow. And so that's that's kind of what it that's what it, it the symptoms look like. What I look at people, I can tell if they've got a goiter, a big a big thick neck, or no eyebrows out here, which is what I saw on Phyllis. Well, everybody has sort of a a pet peeve or a pet focus about whatever. You have one, <laughs> and yours is that you focus on symptoms. I mean, you use blood tests, mm -hmm. you use clinical data that's mm -hmm. acquired by a lab, but that's not the only thing that you use. And your approach to treatment is to treat symptoms. Right. And so when you see symptoms or somebody's complaining about symptoms, your mind starts to turn and say, well, okay, what am I looking at? What am I hearing? What? And, and, and putting them together into what hormones could be off or what disease comp is composed of or is... A mental checklist. You know, yeah, I mean, it works, but tabulated. doctors have that in the back of their they're brain. They're, they should, and they should be. And so are mm -hmm. nurses. Nur mm -hmm. my, my son is a, a nurse, and he will do that. We go out to dinner, and he starts assessing people that walk by. <laughs> this guy's got a goiter problem. This you can almost not pressure. stop doing that. I mean, seriously, uh, yeah. it's part of your brain by the time that you get out get out of residency. You, you can't look at somebody without assessing their, their physical so, characteristics. So that's true. But this other physician that my wife had been seeing for all of her adult life mm -hmm. had never recognized these symptoms in her. Maybe he was too busy. Maybe she didn't complain about the right things at the Maybe right he wasn't time. really trained very well on thyroid. I, I don't know. And, I, and that's not my, my point. My point is that you do recognize those things. You did in her mm -hmm. case. You do in other people's cases. You approach the understanding of how to look at people differently. Mm -hmm. And when a new patient comes to your office, not, not stopping people in the mall. I mean, no, I, I don't I've do that. I've actually been at a medical conference where we're walking down the hall of this big hotel and, and Kathy turned to me and said, I want to stop him and tell him to go to the hospital. Yeah, he looked like it, he was about to have a heart attack. He was gray and he was puffing and yeah, he, he looked like he was struggling. But when somebody comes to you and says, are, are you a doctor? Can I talk to you? <laughs> then yeah. you can do that mm -hmm. and ethically should. Mm -hmm. And I do. And you do. So, and that's, you know. It's like you have a secret and you can tell your secret that you can see something somebody else can't. But having said that, it's important. Several things are important for you to know that your doctor should do. Your doctor should look at you, yes, not, not just the type. computer. They should look at you as you walk in the room or feel your when you shake hands with your doctor. They should they should be thinking cold hands, warm hands. You know, strong, strong, yeah. you know, strong muscles, not strong muscles, you know, kind of, kind of assessing you. And that's important because that's the first thing we see that gives us an idea of your state of health. The next thing is talking to you and asking you leading questions. Right. You come in with one complaint, but then we ask all these leading questions to see if you have this or that, and then we go, foo, foo, foo. you don't have that, you don't have that, I, I and, used to, and hone it down. I spent 25 years training other people to be therapists, and we would always talk about the initial session. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever had the experience of sitting in a therapist's waiting room, but <laughs> I come out I of, have. <laughs> of my office and open the waiting room door, and I know that I have a new client there, and I'm looking around to see all the people that are in there, which one might be my new client. What I would tell my students about is, you begin immediately to formulate what we call rolling assumptions. Mm -hmm. Rolling assumptions. I, I look to see who's sitting next to who, what their body language is, if there's anger or tension in the room, if, who walks in first, who walks in second. Do you offer to put your hand out and shake my hand, or mm -hmm. do you not want to do, not want to be touched? Do you, mm -hmm. do you, you know, whatever. And then, but but I'm constantly prepared to disregard that assumption mm -hmm. because it's not a conclusion; it's an assumption. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have any data. But I'm formulating, and I constantly formulate, but with the understanding that I mean, need to throw that out the window. Mm -hmm. You know, like like if, if you're sitting in the waiting room with your arms crossed, mm -hmm. that may mean that you're angry. And you don't want to be there. It may mean that you're cold. Mm -hmm. I need to find out. It may mean mm -hmm. that your stomach hurts. So you have to ask so questions to, ask to questions. find out. Exactly. So we do that. The other, so that's two things that doctors do to figure out what's wrong with you. Right. Then the next thing, <laughs> ask. <laughs> then the next thing is like physical exam. So oftentimes I'll like say, let me look at your fingernails. Yes. Or let me see your, the palms of your hands, the color of the palms of your hands. So like, can you tell about thyroid from fingernails? Oh yeah, fingernails look ridge, really ridged and broken. Uh -huh. Now it's hard with women who use gel. 
because that wrecks your nails. I mean, I've done it, but it also, if it's off your nails, they're kind of uh, damaged. And so you can't really tell if it's thyroid. I almost, and if their toes aren't done, I'd like to see their toes. Okay. But if they're, mm, but they I have, have gel over their nails, I can't, I can't see that. So I have to look at other things. So one of the things that thyroid has that thyroid, if you have low thyroid, your tongue swells. So I have them stick their tongue as out. As a doctor, you have to be willing to look at anything. Well, of as course. A, as That's a counselor, our, I don't. Yeah, lucky you. <laughs> so, I mean, so I look at their, I look, I have them stick their tongue out. If they have teeth marks all the way around yeah. the outside of their tongue, their, tongue's too big their, their tongue mouth. is swollen from not enough thyroid. And that okay. I can even do that if I'm questioning whether someone has enough thyroid. I'm, I'm giving them thyroid if they have enough. So when I, so I have them stick their tongue out or I have them, I look at the bags under their eyes and women are great at, at kind of camouflaging that. So I ask them, did you, did you put a lot of under eye concealer on? And then I look at their eyebrows. Now that takes a lot because women will put, had be tattooed yeah. or they will be, um, or they'll have eyebrow pencil on and right. you almost have to say, do you have eyebrow pencil? Did you tattoo your eyebrows? Do you have, so you don't ask them, are you a painted hussy? <laughs> Well, that's not what I think about when I, because my term eyebrows, I learned growing up my eyebrows are tattooed. So, you know, just, I learned that term, actually I learned that term at church. You know, that just shows your age. <laughs> it does. And my ears. <laughs> because people used to not wear makeup. Yeah. So we all wear makeup now pretty much, you know, it's kind of of some kind. So it, we're not all painted hussies. I, I have come to appreciate that as I've aged <laughs> uh, and moved further north. <laughs> so in addition to symptoms, you also require request blood tests. And that's the looking. last piece. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. And so the last piece is to look at all the thyroid hormones that somebody makes. So you make T3, which is one of the most active thyroid hormone, and you make T4, which is the least active, at least potent. Those are two separate thyroid two hormones? Two separate thyroid hormones okay. that you make. All right. So when... When we're testing, we look at those two hormones. Now, most doctors just look at TSH, which is a stimulating hormone from your brain to your thyroid. And it's like looking at a reflection. It is really not a good test to look at thyroid. You should look at the two thyroid hormones first. And I look at T3, T4, but so here's the catch. T3, T4 is the first thing that comes out of your, of your thyroid gland. Then there are six enzymatic steps that change your thyroid hormone so that it can get into your cells. And then six more inside your cells before it gets into the mitochondria, some of you know what that is, to make energy. So when you make energy, you make heat. So I look at the first step and I look at basal body temperature, the temperature orally with a regular old uh, thermometer and oral thermometer. oral thermometer. You put it under your tongue one minute, you look at it, and if it is over 97.9 and you're female or 98 and you're male, then your thyroid's okay. What about the new digital thermometers that, you know, like the little tags you can put on somebody's forehead and monitor? It Those have to be number. adjusted, and it'll show you on the, uh, on the, um, wrapping around it, how you adjust that temperature to the temperature that's oral or if it already adjusts it. Because okay. your skin temperature is always less than your oral so temperature. So some of the new equipment is, is good that way, but you still prefer the old-fashioned oral thermometer. But when I'm talking 97.9, yeah. I'm talking oral temperature, okay. not ear temperature, not uh, forehead temperature, yes. but not rectal temperature. Rectal's higher, skin's lower, you know. So I'm talking about oral temperature, which is and it has to be before you get out of bed. You have to put the thermometer in before you get out of bed, before you start moving. Morning. Yeah. And one minute, you can know it. You don't have to do it daily. You could do it weekly. But you can find a trend. And then I like to look at both lab and temperature and symptoms to determine whether somebody's on the right dose. I don't care if the labs if the lab is looks like you have too much, you have no side effects, your temperature is perfect, like 98.2. I mean, that's great. And I don't care what the lab says. If your symptoms so, are gone and so your temperature is good. the pieces for you are basal body temperature and symptom. Right. But I do the lab just to kind of figure out what normal, what is normal for you. And you have to remember another thing. When you go to get the lab in the morning, you don't take your thyroid first because there's always a peak 
of that thyroid hormone that right after you take it orally, there's in every oral drug, there's like a peak. Mm -hmm. And so you don't know how long like that lasts, surge. like a surge. So we're looking at something that looks way high when the rest of the day, you may not even be getting enough. So the way that you explain it to me is that the thyroid is like the furnace that if your body temperature, it, it drives that. Yes. And if your body temperature is not in this range, then none of the other hormone medicines that you take work. And none of the other enzymes. So we're warm blooded for a reason. We were created to have a body temperature of 98 or above basically. And in that temperature range, all of our enzymes work. If we're below that temperature range, they don't work. So that means cells aren't replaced. And I mean, it is, you can have damaged cells hanging around because you're not replacing them that you can have your stomach enzymes not work. You can, I mean, if you're too cold, your body doesn't work. So the the one thing you can't do without in a chemistry class that studies things that go on in the human body is a Bunsen burner because you have to make everything you have warm to make up. everything warm to work. Otherwise, it just sits there. So if you think about it that way and you aren't making en making heat from the energy that you eat, you're, you're going to gain weight. You're going to gain fat. You're going to stop metabolizing your, your old cells and replacing them with new cells. You're going to all of the enzymes and hormones in your body are going to be slow or not work. You're, you're really causing disease by not having your thyroid replaced. And so few people in the United States are replaced appropriately. So it, you have to say to your doctor, I want you to look at my basal temperature and my symptoms. I'm really not interested in, in the lab, although I don't, I wouldn't refuse to get it, but I don't want a TSH. I want thyroid hormone. Yeah. And I want you to go by these other things, which are really what matter to you is that your symptoms are gone. What about Their iodine hair's or iodorol? And it, how does that mix in with okay, thyroid? Okay, so issue? thyroid is made out of iodine, but your cells also have to have a, a high enough level of iodine for your cells to actually make the thyroid hormone work inside the cell. Okay. So not only if you take thyroid, so that that's the T3 take, and T4 coming from the thyroid. Yeah. But then you still, when it, when it gets to your cells, there has to be iodine. Iodine in the cells okay. for it to work. So it's not just, oh, I'm taking thyroid, I don't need iodine. And what's happened in the United States, which is just a shame, it's kind of like the, the food pyramid that was wrong and gave us all diabetes. So your government they, dollars at work. Your government dollars at work decided that we shouldn't put iodine in bread anymore, and we put bromine, which is like a heavy metal and not good for us, in bread. And so they took iodine out, and then they put fluoride in our water, which is great for our teeth, but it kicks iodine out of the water, so you don't get any iodine that normally would be in your water um, when you drink normal normal tap water. So we have no iodine, So and and what's worse... Those of you who live in the Midwest have no iodine in the ground. So if you eat your garden vegetables where you normally would get some iodine, there's nothing in the Midwest. So you can only live on the coasts and get iodine where there used to be kelp and an ocean and that kind of thing. The glaciers scraped off all that. We have no iodine in our ground. So you would recommend people that live in the Midwest to consider just taking some form of iodine. Yes. As, as a basic supplement yes. to their diet. That's right. I would. And, and iodine is known to protect from breast cancer because one of the reasons women have more thyroid disease than men is that we have breasts. And so the minute, and that's one of the high time, that's one of the peak times when women start getting um, low thyroid is when their breasts are starting to, to develop. So there's a peak time there at pregnancy and then at menopause. So, so lots of young women, and that's, I was in that age group, as soon as your breasts start growing, they suck up all the iodine and your thyroid starves. Okay. So it's so, like changing the channel. Yeah. Just it from just, where it should, the signal should be sent. Yeah. It gets diverted and sent to the breast. It's, a, it's like a mineral, but it's an essential mineral. So yeah. it goes, it's not going to your thyroid anymore. So if you're really iodine deficient, it doesn't go to your breast, you get fibrocystic breast disease. So it's, it is a necessary element for both your thyroid and your breast. So taking it, especially if you're in that young age group and 
thereafter, you should be taking iodine to protect your, yourself from breast cancer if you're female, but also to make sure your thyroid's working. If your thyroid's already damaged, like mine was, iodine wasn't going to make it work again. Mm -hmm. But some people are on the edge. They're just, it's still like puttering along, but slowly we can give them iodine and sometimes that fixes it. Okay. But replacing the thyroid replaces all of your thyroid, drops your TSH, it should. All the doctors go, oh my God, you don't have any TSH, that's so terrible. But my T3 and T4 are purple, perfect. They're perfect. So why care about that stimulating hormone? Right. It doesn't do anything but stimulate your thyroid. So for me... Which if you're taking a thyroid replacement, you don't need to stimulate your thyroid at all. You don't need you to stimulate... You just need the replacement. You just need the replacement. Because right. the, the, it's just like when we give birth control pills, the two hormones that stimulate the ovaries, FSH and LH, they just go down to nothing. We don't need them anymore because we've got birth control pills. So we, we've seen this. OBs have seen this in other, in other hormones. We understand it, but... Endocrinologists generally don't do the sex hormones and don't take care of that kind of thing like estrogen replacement or birth control pills. So they don't really have another thing to look at. Mm -hmm. But make sure they look at your free T3 and free T4, the active part. And that will tell you whether free, you're free making Free means it's it not bound to some other uh, element. Protein. And, and it's available to your system. Right. It's active. Coursing through your blood. She needs to pull that out. So let me quickly run through these symptoms again because I think they're significant. Basal body temperature and symptoms you need to know so that you can go and talk to your physician and say, hey, could you check this out because I have a concern. Tiredness, depression, forgetfulness, dry, coarse hair, loss of lateral eyebrow hair, puffy face and eyes, goiter, slow heartbeat, dry skin, cold intolerance, weight gain, heavy menstrual periods, constipation, Brittle nails. There's a couple other things. Hair loss. Hair right? loss. Hair shedding. In the shower. Shedding. In the shower. Shedding. And yeah. then you look, if you have dark hair and you have white white background, you can see these broken hairs up here. Yeah. I mean, not cut so that they're shagged, but, but broken, like sticking and out and frayed. Yeah. So that's a very common thing with, with low thyroid. And, and people come in, they look kind of frazzled, you know? Okay. So, uh, but also swelling of the lower legs and a low blood pressure. So those are added that they don't have in this list. Okay. So if you have two or three of those things or three or four of those things, make it a point. Because when you go to your physician, you should have a, a list of mm -hmm. two or three questions you want to ask or uh, two or three points that you want to make to explore. Otherwise, you're wasting the visit opportunity. And so good pre-planning requires for you to give a few minutes thought to what do I want to get out of this visit? Mm -hmm. You just don't kind of show up and go, what's wrong with me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to have some s symptoms. I mean, if you feel great and there's not one thing that's wrong with you, you can go for blood work or preventive checkup. things. But honestly, when pa patients send me their blood work and they have no symptoms of low hormones, right. I'm like, ah, you can go to your primary care for this. Right. And just look at your blood work, or, or but I'm not going to treat you because there's there are no symptoms. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not feeling bad. There are some people with even low estrogen and testosterone that still feel good. Mm -hmm. And in general, I won't treat them unless they have another reason to be treated. Correct. Right. Once again, thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.